Hi, you're with India Post Live, India's first online news conversation, Web TV. I'm Ishan Russell, and India Post is, of course, a forum for you to participate in. Come in via social media, use Twitter, hashtag India Post Live to your tweets, or use our Twitter handle at India Post Live. Or you can use Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook page called India Post Live. You can go like it and comment over there, and you can even post pictures and videos if you want and get in touch with us. Or you can go to IndiaPostLive.com. You can watch this video live as we are streaming right now, or you can watch this later as a video on demand. And there's so a whole host of other videos as well for you to check out. So go check out, uh, check them out, and there's a wall over there for you to comment upon as well. All right, now today we're talking about uh, new friendship, new ties that we're seeing develop between countries uh, because India has a new prime minister, and on his first visit abroad, he went to our neighbor Bhutan. Why so? And uh, what was the strategic importance of this visit? And what was this? What was the outcome of that visit? We'll be discussing that today with uh, Surya Gangadharan. He's of course the editor in chief of Defense and Technology Magazine. Thank you very much for coming in. And we also have with us Manish Chan. Manish has uh, written, uh, Manish is of course the editor-in-chief of India Rights, which is a portal on international affairs and also has uh, pr produced a documentary on uh, indo bhutanese ties. So I'll start with you, Manish. As far as uh, this visit goes, why was Bhutan first chosen uh, as uh, Narendra Modi's first destination? Uh, see, the Prime Minister chose Bhutan because uh, India-Bhutan relations are, uh, in a manner of speaking, exemplary. Mm. They're a model of good neighborliness. It's a, it's, a, it's a classic case of, you know, where you have no issues between two neighbors, where you can only take relations to new heights. So, so Bhutan, the choice of Bhutan, of course, was to ensure a successful, you know, a friction-free visit. Mm. Also, the, 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 the visit underlined the focus mm. on South Asia. Mm. The new prime minister's focus on developing ties with South Asia and immediate neighborhood, mm -hmm. which was also uh, underscore, underscored and telescoped in the uh, Prime Minister's decision to invite the leaders of South Asian countries for his swearing in, the first ever step. You know, in the, in the past, no Indian Prime Minister invited uh, leaders from SARC countries. So this was an extension of that. Mm -hmm. You know, Bhutan being the smallest neighbor, but at the same time, a neighbor with which India enjoys exceptionally close ties, it has, of course, its strategic importance. You know, Bhutan contributes a chunk of our hydroelectricity needs, you know. Uh, so it is critical to our national interest. In strategic sense, uh, we, uh, we also got to look at, uh, and at this point you may come at a later point in the conversation, about China's growing inroads yes. into that country. So, they, and, uh, so, so also one of, another point I want to highlight is that economic diplomacy mm -hmm. is the centerpiece of the new government's uh, engagement with foreign countries. This is a template. Mm -hmm. So Bhutan fits in with that as well, because here also when Prime Minister went to Bhutan in joint address to the Bhutanese parliament, his message was that a strong India is in uh, is in everybody's interest in in the in, in the interest of South Asia in Bhutan. He wanted to sell the India story. He wanted to create a sphere of co-prosperity. So Bhutan also, and he also wants to, one of the important thing was that uh, hydropower cooperation mm. is the is the enduring pillar mm. of India-Bhutan relations. But he also sought to go beyond that, and some of those early indications were there. You know, right. so he wanted to develop robust economic ties. Strategically, he wants to bring Bhutan into closer embrace, so as to ward off any future, you know, Chinese challenge, if one can put it that way, not so much the threat. All right, and I want to get in Surya on the Chinese yeah. challenge, because Surya, uh, last year there was a little bit of a sarring of ties, and uh, this uh, kind of visit sort of reinforces that friendship, but uh, how big is that uh, China question for the Indian uh, diplomats? I think uh, last year's thing was not so much China related, it was mm. something bilateral, it was a hiccup, really. Mm. And the election there actually sorted things out. Mm. Uh, the China thing, in my view, is a little overstated. Uh, it's not an issue right now. Uh, yes, China is pressing Bhutan for a border settlement, uh, which could involve uh, some issues for India. And yes, China wants an embassy in Thimphu. Uh, these are all well known. But uh, I don't see Bhutan um, uh, following through on those things, at least for the next decade or so. And in that sense, uh, the Chinese thing we've kept at bay for a while. But as the democracy impulses in Bhutan uh, increase, you know, and Bhutan's own desire for autonomy and uh, uh, more freedom of maneuver uh, in the diplomatic space gathers ground, uh, we'll have to see how we deal with this. Mm. Uh, it's not something we are blind to. We know it will happen in course of time. We are the ones who encourage Bhutan on this democracy path. Uh, but this is something that will happen uh, perhaps in the next decade. We don't know. 
All right, Manish, but uh, and uh, I'll ask my producer to play out the graphics of uh, the kind of ties uh, and uh, the new initiatives uh, that have been promised uh, by the Prime Minister uh, in his uh, first visit abroad. Uh, in fact, uh, those are up on your screen right now. Uh, yeah. And uh, India and Bhutan committed to achieving a 10,000 megawatt target in hydropower cooperation, as Manish, Manish was saying. Uh, the Supreme Court building is a, a cooperation, uh, and Modi uh, laid the foundation stone for that. And he also mooted the idea of an annual hill sports festival with Indians, India's northeastern states along with Bhutan and Nepal. Both India and Bhutan reaffirmed their commitment to extensive development cooperation and discussed ways to further enhance economic ties. His, Modi described Bhutan as his, a natural choice for his first visit as the two countries shared a special relationship. All right, so b b a whole host of uh, points uh, there to talk about. But Manish, what I really want to talk about is uh, India's understanding of Bhutan is also very limited. I mean, as Indians, we really do not know much about Bhutan. And uh, it's a country that um, was really uh, cut off from the world, so to say. I remember reading in school that did not have TV for the longest. It just came <laughs> very late. So, I mean, uh, uh, what kind of a country is Bhutan for, for an Indian to understand the importance of Bhutan? See, let's uh, go back to basics. As you're saying, your early memories of Bhutan were <coughs> of an idyllic country, mm. cut off from the rest of the world, and stunningly picturesque mm. to begin with. I mean, yeah. That's the first thing, even someone had to Google, the images of Bhutan are that of, you know, uh, otherworldly splendor, mm. uh, of, of sheer natural beauty and all that. Uh, and this was a country uh, which still, you know, one of, one of the things which people do not know about, uh, not many people, that it's the only country in the world and it's a pioneer in that respect, which has pioneered the concept of gross national happiness. Mm. It does not measure its national wealth in terms of GDP, but in terms of GNP, gross national happiness. And this evokes the label of contentment the people of Bhutan enjoy. It's like being at peace, being in harmony with your surroundings, with your nature. That comes from their culture, from Buddhism, from the Himalayas, mm. all that. So it's a country which has all the, those attractions. Uh, as, as a, if you're to go as a tourist place, I mean, Bhutan regulates the flow of tourists. So I don't know how, how, how many, not many Indians uh, have Bhutan high up on their, you know, on their tourist itinerary because some or other we are West fixated uh, mm. or, or, you know, Southeast Asia, Singapore. So it doesn't have all those other, uh, you know, modern, the uh, glamorous, the, yeah, glamorous horns and all that. Mm. It's a country which has its own charm. But also now talking about what is contemporary Bhutan about. Mm. It's a country which is navigating its uh, transition to modernity on its own terms. Mm. You know, Bhutan embraced democracy uh, only a few years ago. Bhutan is a benign king who, who saw things, you know, who, who had the foresight to see that he must make way for limited political reforms, widen the constitution, Bhutanese youth. There is a surge of aspirations in the Bhutanese society, but the good news story is that it's all within limits. Mm. There is no mindless consumerism, you know. Mm. So this is the product of a culture which uh, does not place much premium on uh, materialistic uh, luxuries of life. But it's, uh, is that changing? I mean, is that Yeah, that's what. I mean, let me come to that. Also, mm -hmm. that Bhutan is, has the highest per capita income mm -hmm. in South Asia. The hydropower, the abundance is sitting on gold mine. You know, it's a white, white gold, as they say. Uh, but yes, uh, there are signs of change. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is no longer the Bhutan, uh, which was the perfect, uh, picture perfect place uh, of 10 years ago or a decade ago. It's a changing place. It's a place exploding with aspirations. So middle class is rising. Democracy has had its impact also partially. Mm. The political space is opening up. Also, the information technology is embracing information technology, the satellite uh, world of satellite TV entertainment. So some of the, those cultural influences are percolating in. It is subtly changing the way Putin is thinking. But I believe the combination of two things I would suggest. One is where they are situated is still uh, relatively cut off, mm. the, the, their, uh, their physical location, being surrounded by Himalayas. You know, as you know, the people in the hills have a different uh, worldview, which is not the same as that of we people sitting out here. Mm. So that is ingrained in them, you know, mm. the, the love for mountains, love for nature, and all that comes from there. And second is Buddhism. Buddhism is a very powerful force. So I think these two will make sure, that is my thing, that the tide of modernity is unstoppable. But at the same time, 
Bhutan will probably negotiate the undercurrents of modernity on its own term. That's my hope. And it will not uh, uh, dilute or give up on its uh, gross national happiness. Rather, it will take it to other parts of the world where there is a lot of frustration mm. with excess of hedonism mm. and materialistic way of life. So to a lot of people, Bhutan has that added attraction. It takes you to a place where mind calms down and you have a different worldview. And some of that right. is also uh, permeating India-Bhutan relationship. All right, but, 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 is, but uh, many would say that India is also just looking at Bhutan as a market from a completely capitalist point of view. I mean, there are many Indian business interests in Bhutan. A lot of uh, exchange has happened over the years. But many Indian, I know people who live in Bhutan and operate businesses over there. So uh, the, the India-Bhutan engagement and that way is pretty, I mean, you can't really, I mean, it's not like any other country. It's pretty uh, uh, free-flowing. I it? don't know if there's that much of a market really uh, in Bhutan for Indian goods, you know. It's a small country, small population, uh, they don't have very many needs and uh, much of that we meet anyway. I think India would be looking elsewhere for mm. markets and profits and that kind of big business, you mm. know. Uh, Bhutan in that sense can't take quantities of your, what you produce. Mm. Uh, it's such a small country and landlocked. Mm. So um, I think India would be looking elsewhere for that. Okay. But yes, there are, uh, there's a huge chunk of Bhutanese budget which is uh, generated by India. The Bhutanese don't acknowledge that. There may be some resentment, I'm mm. sure there will be. Uh, but that's a fact of life until such a time as Bhutan decides that the current uh, system that they have, they need to go beyond that. They need to look elsewhere for sources of revenue. They want to diversify relations with other countries, possibly China, we don't know. Um, so at this point, I don't really see uh, India, Bhutan as a big marketplace for Indian goods. Yes, there is a, there is a, uh, there is a strategic uh, presence that Bhutan represents, you know. Mm. And that is something India is not going to give up as a buffer state. All right. Uh, but in terms of markets and all that, I don't think Bhutan really is. Uh, all right. But in terms of thinking for uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, I mean, a larger question, not just about Bhutan, but uh, the issue of electricity is something that uh, for, for him it seems to be very important because he spoke about power generation with Pakistan also, in Bhutan also, hydroelectricity is very important. So electricity generation, it seems, is a top priority for him. Well, he's a pragmatic Gujarati mm. you know, and if you look at how he's reworked the state electricity board in Gujarat it makes profits mm. and he has devised a system whereby you know people pay different rates uh, for uh, usage and the time of usage so he's looking to replicate some of those systems but the main point here is he has to work with the states mm. he's not going to try and perhaps push the states into doing things although he will try mm. Uh, but uh, he'll try and work with the states to ensure that this kind of thing comes about. Mm. And yes, electricity is crucial. Uh, this summer we've already had power cuts in Delhi and mm. uh, I'm sure he doesn't want to begin his uh, tenure with, uh, you know, that kind of a thing over his, uh, with power cuts all over Delhi. Uh, yes, Bhutan is useful. It generates uh, a few thousand megawatts of electricity for us. But uh, really in the long term, India needs far, far more than that. And perhaps the way forward is with nuclear power, with solar power as he's shown in Gujarat. Mm. Uh, and with connecting with your neighbors, selling them power, exchanging, making grids, uh, mm. in that sense, transferable, being able to move electricity from one country to another. Mm. Uh, that's also one way of building ties, you know, economic mm. relations really uh, builds relations far better than, you know, all the agreements that you sign the political agreements that you may sign. All right. Uh, Manish, uh, the, 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 with Narendra Modi, we've seen a very Barack, Barack obama as kind of a, pri uh, I mean, not a president, but a prime minister. I mean, in Bhutan also, he got out of the car, went and met people, stopped his cavalcade. So, I mean, uh, and the kind of campaign that we witnessed was also similar. So, we can expect more similarities like that, can we? Uh, see, I mean, uh, what Modi's uh, prime ministership, his, his signature style of reaching out to people, Communication savvy. I mean, for the first time after many years, you have a prime minister who reaches out to people. Mm -hmm. And he has deployed a whole battery of, apart from his personal, you know, when he came, for example, after the blockbuster landslide victory in the elections, mm -hmm. when he came to Delhi, he, he kind of, you know, uh, when he was being driven around, he came out of the, mm -hmm. of, of the, of the zoo and he started waving to the crowds. So somehow or other, this idea of people-centric, like what, what Obama has done, you know, two things people-centric presidency and, and, and his uh, anthem song of uh, the audacity of hope. Mm. You know, this, if you look at, the, look at the Modi's message, better than Ane Wale. Mm. You know, all of that, and, and, and it's all being amplified through social media networks. He has, after taking charge, he has instructed his ministers to go on social platform. And just imagine, only a few years ago, a man, uh, the, 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 the very suave politician yeah. called Sashi Tharoor, <laughs> would deride it. 
for using uh, social media this. networks. Yeah. <laughs> so what were the taboo ones has now become the done thing or in thing to do. So, so what we saw in Bhutan, his address to uh, to Bhutanese Parliament, of course, he spoke in Hindi. Hmm. Uh, because he is also speaking, he knows that he's not just speaking to Bhutanese Parliament. The world is watching him on his first overseas visit. So it, the the all the palm ceremony and all that we saw. But if you re, if you listen to that Hindi speech, that that emotional touch, hmm. you know, though some of these words are untranslatable, hmm. but it creates a sense of intimacy, hmm. uh, and that people centric presidency wherever he goes out. In that respect, one uh, does not mean any disrespect to his predecessor, hmm. uh, but he was uh, more a bureaucrat, an official, uh, a more very efficient person. one. Yeah, 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 all that. But that per people touch were lacking, and that is what we're seeing in the in, in our prime minister right now in, in, in Narendra Modi. And when he's going abroad, he's also bringing that uh, freshness, you know, a bit of a touch of that personal. Which I think is a is a good good thing and both good for India's foreign relations. All right, uh, uh, as far as the Bhutanese perspective is concerned, we spoke to uh, Tenzin Dorji. He is the managing director of Bhutan Today, one of the largest circulated newspapers over there. Uh, I spoke to him a short while ago, so let's listen into that conversation for a bit. How was the visit of Narendra Modi viewed by the Bhutanese people and the Bhutanese establishment? Mr. Narendra Modi, the visit to Bhutan, it was actually, it has been a big honor and privilege to our country and our people. His coming to Bhutan has actually really enhanced Indo Bhutan relationship. But I think his visit to Bhutan has further assured that the Indo Bhutan relation is going to go a long way. He should actually, the statement given by the Prime Minister was uh, <clears throat> P4P was very big. I, in fact, find it as uh, a very strong reassurance between two countries. In terms of specifics, is there anything that specifically Bhutan wants from India uh, in this new relationship that uh, the countries are trying to forge? I think uh, the experience, if you, if you actually look back, in, uh, Bhutan and India, I think we had actually uh, uh, got into a, a lot of major projects. And, uh, and uh, India's assistance to, uh, in that this project has been actually great help, not only to Bhutan as well as to India. I think likewise, there are a lot of uh, upcoming projects. I think uh, the, uh, the India's assistance to this project, in, it could be financial as well as technical, would actually <clears throat> really help both the countries. I think that is something that I, I think we will actually look forward to. All right, so we've spoken a lot about Bhutan, but, uh, but the, what about the larger diplomatic uh, angle that uh, the new prime minister and his establishment are trying to establish? And uh, we'll discuss that for a quick bit before we wrap this up. So, Surya, I mean, can we expect a lot more uh, like this from uh, the new prime minister? Well, uh, he's going to uh, Japan, I believe, uh, mm. sometime in July. There's a BRICS thing also happening mm. in Brazil. Uh, there's a visit to Nepal, I'm told, also in July. So he has a fairly hectic uh, schedule. September, there's a bilateral with President Obama, which is again, uh, which will again be pretty big. Mm. So uh, for a very brand new prime minister, he's got a very hectic uh, foreign policy schedule. Mm. Um, let's see how things work out. But at least his focus is on the neighborhood, you know. Mm. I mean, um, Nepal visit taking place. Uh, I think the foreign minister is also heading for Bangladesh, I believe. Mm. So in that sense, the uh, focus is keeping on the uh, on the neighborhood. I mean, India. What is your assessment? I mean, you've really observed these ties, uh, India's neighborhood ties, and over the past ten years, has have had they become strained? Was it were they not being actively pursued? Well, How would you view uh, it? They they have been comfortable. Let's mm. put it that way. With Pakistan, of course, there's a huge legacy of blood, blood, and uh, although Mr. Uh, Nawaz Sharif has been here uh, for the uh, swearing in. The fact remains, he's not his own man. Uh, there's a military there which is, uh, uh, exercises some kind of a, uh, veto power over his diplomacy with India, economic relations with India. So in that sense, he's uh, tried and you know, kind of uh, uh, kept in uh, restrained. Uh, Bangladesh, we had a great opportunity to have sorted out issues on Tista with uh, uh, the, that country. But unfortunately, uh, the last UPA government didn't have the um, courage to push it through, perhaps even the numbers in parliament. Mm. So that fell through and uh, that was reflected in Bangladesh in the manner in which they, they deal with you. Uh, also the discourse with Bangladesh remains rather unfairly centered on immigration and all that. Mm. These are issues, I don't mm. deny that. But uh, we can't just look at Bangladesh in those one dimensional terms, you know. You have to look at Bangladesh uh, even more broadly than that. Hopefully he will correct that. 
Uh, Nepal again, uh, there's been a lot of uh, political flux in Nepal, mm. issues with the constitution and all. Hopefully the Nepalese are getting their act together with some help from us. Uh, but uh, Bangladesh, uh, Nepal's tendency to kind of play off India vis-a-vis -vis China and all that. Uh, I wonder how Modi will deal with that. Mm. Uh, that's something which um, um, he has to handle at some point. And the Chinese have made inroads into Nepal. Mm. Uh, but uh, by and large, I believe uh, the uh, neighborhood in that sense uh, will merit a lot of Modi's attention. And it requires it so because it's so critical for our own uh, growth. You know. Absolutely. Uh, Manish, final word to you. Uh, but as far as uh, Narendra Modi is concerned, I've been, we've been surprised one after another by new announcements. Anything new that you would uh, expect from him? Anything you would like him to focus on as far as the foreign affairs and neighborhood is concerned? Uh, you see, uh, one of the things uh, that has happened, and it, and it happened in the day he was sworn in, the presence of South Asian leaders at his swearing in ceremony. It was a very powerful signal. It signaled that this government is going to be proactive. Mm. That is the key word. And I call it proactive, pragmatic, and performance, the three Ps. Of course, Modi has its T's, which is about <laughs> technology, trade, tourism. Mm. And those three T's and these three P's, if you combine, you have a foreign policy template for South Asia. You see, what is the problem with South Asia? Uh, essentially, it is India-Pakistan relationship, mm. the strategic distrust, which is, of course, historical context, which is holding up the potential of this entire region. Mm. I mean, this re region is like 1.6 billion people. It's a huge number of people. You know, so you're, not, you're talking about the destinies, the, the fortunes, and they are all interlinked. This is a diplomatic cliche, but in genuine sense, mm. it is 1.6 billion people whose destinies are interlinked. Mm. And one of the important things he said in Bhutanese parliament uh, is a strong India is in the interest of Bhutan, in the interest of entire neighborhood. Now, you see, this needs a, a, a careful examination because uh, off and on we hear the construction of India, the image of India as big brother. Mm. Because, but you know, that's, that paranoia has been fed not only in Pakistan, but uh, in Bangladesh, in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, the big brother, bully and all that, hege uh, hegemon in the making. But the point is that what can India do about its size? Mm -hmm. In South Asia, it towers above. It's 1.2 billion people. What can it do? Mm -hmm. Can I do something if I'm taller than you? <laughs> 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 so, the, but the point is that that how do you tackle these advantages? That India's economy is a $4 trillion economy, 1.2 billion people, all that. So what he's trying to tell that do not fear. He's trying to create a narrative of opportunity. Mm. You know, for far too long, and Pakistan has been forefront as India as a hegemon, mm. India as some kind of big bully monster. He's trying to turn it around and sell the India story. That listen, you can latch on, you can also benefit. So I call it co-creating a sphere of co-prosperity. Mm. Let's all join in. So he knows that with Pakistan, the issues are there. If you look at his campaign rhetoric, mm. he was saying no talks with Pakistan. Well, you know that Hindi expression, bum, banduk, whatever, and you cannot <laughs> yeah, talk yeah, yeah. Uh, and all that. But he, was, he surprised everybody yeah. by calling the Pakistan prime minister. He was quite warm, you know, handshake. You look at the picture, symbolism. He's basically telling that, look, India is going to go ahead, surge ahead, like it or not. Mm. And we want to take our neighbors along. Mm. So join in this win-win journey. Shed your paranoia, shed other things. Let's be a little more creative with our diplomacy. Mm. So in fact, by calling Pakistan Prime Minister, and, and, and you know, Pakistan Prime Minister also accepting that invitation, uh, shows uh, possibilities. Now, of yeah. course, it's a beginning. A lot of things can go wrong. You have something, not forget about 26 by 11, a terror attack. Even on a smaller scale, yeah. the whole thing come unstuck. That's a sad part of it. Yeah. But if you have a prime minister who is focused in the long-term vision, that I say proactive, pragmatic, focus, for India, it's about economy. Our economy hasn't been doing well. And uh, we, uh, in fact, the India story in the last few years lost its glitter and shine. Mm. It's pretty bad, sub-5-0 growth. Mm. Now the top priority, foreign policy is not foreign. Mm. Foreign policy is intimately linked up with developmental goals of the nation. Mm. So let's not think that foreign policy is something which diplomats discuss over cocktail, chatter and all that. It's very much about the average man, Aam Admi also. Mm. So he is the message which was, when he was speaking to the Bhutanese parliament, he was in fact talking to the entire neighborhood. He was saying India is going to be strong, like it or not. You may play games. You may like to plot terror attacks. We will march ahead because there are no choice but to march. That is the nature 
of, of a river. A river has to keep flowing. And the great the, civilization, a great power has to go on. But we are not the dominating type. Mm. It's a, the whole challenge for India's foreign policy and Modi's foreign policy is to create a narrative in the long term, I would say, of India's place in the world. Mm of what kind of power India wants to become. Clearly, we do not want to become a power like America, which goes around interfering and you know hold that, and attracted a lot of backlash, a lot of hostility. India with its uh, centuries-old civilization, India with its ideals, India with its economic power, soft power, we have so much going. Mm. We have to turn around the economy. If South Asia, if, if this whole problem is resolved, actually it's good news not just for the region, right. for the entire world. So I think with that message of hope, with that message that foreign policy is not foreign, mm. and India's foreign policy success of this endeavor is also linked up with the, you know, the larger success of the world. Because a terror attack tomorrow, New York would target it. The conspiracy was hatched in some Tora Bora hills or somewhere, mm. some places people even had heard of. Right. Yeah. So the broad message is let's create a win-win journey of co-prosperity. Let's create opportunities. Let's not get stuck in the past. Move on. Yes, but the Prime Minister is certainly saying it. Right. He's moved on from his election yeah, rhetoric. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> let the rest of South Asia also move on. <laughs> on that note, we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much, Surya, for coming in. And thank you so much, Manish. It was a pleasure to have both of you in the studio. On that note, uh, we'll wrap up. But uh, do comment uh, on uh, IndiaPostLive.com about what you think about the Indi India-Bhutanese ties. And also, what do you think about the Prime Minister's new diplomatic initiatives are uh, right into us tweet out to us use facebook but just do get in touch with us thanks so much for watching